I've always loved magic. I don't remember not loving it. Uh, I think I got my first magic set when I was about five years old and, and just started practicing all the tricks. And My mum would have to read the instructions to me so I'd, I'd know how to do them. It was when I was about eight, I had a magician for my, I had for my eighth birthday party actually, and he really inspired me to, to really get into magic and to, to do even more. I collected all of the magic sets and, and performed all the tricks on all my friends and family as much as I could. At university, I studied wildlife conservation, and this really opened my eyes to some of the issues that the world faces. And it's, it's climate change, it's biodiversity loss, you know, ocean pollution, deforestation, there's so many different issues that the world faces. But one of the key things I realised from that degree was how important environmental education is. We have so many of the solutions to solve these problems, but we don't do them. I use magic as a communications tool. It's a way to capture attention and share a message in a fun way. And I design them in ways that when you're thinking about the trick and what happened, it helps you to remember the message as well. Rubbish rotting in landfill produces methane, which is a powerful greenhouse gas and is also dangerously explosive. It took me a while to sort of realise that I could do something, that I could make a difference. One of my favourite pieces to perform is using three ropes which represent our plants, animals and insects. They start off equal length, showing that nature is in balance and everything has its place. As I talk about the issues the world faces, mainly caused by us humans, they become different sizes. Some become dominant, some are shrinking, they're going extinct, and other species maybe aren't affected so much right now. I then talk about what we can do to help and restore the ropes back to their original equal length in the hope that we humans can make nature be much more balanced. There are so many different ways to get the message out there and I think the, the more it becomes embedded in everything we do, the more hope we have of getting those messages through. So anyone can make a difference. Don't think that you can't. The Magic Circle took its time to allow women to join. They first joined the society in 1991, which was the year before I was born. So I've grown up in a world where I could always join the Magic Circle, and I know I'm really fortunate for that. I think since I've been a member, I've certainly seen a younger demographic coming through, which is excellent for me. It's brilliant to see more younger members, and, and that's how we, we help the society and the art of magic to, to survive and, and to thrive. It's I think that it's definitely still male dominated and I think it will continue to be for a long time and that's not just the magic circle, that's the magic world as a whole but I definitely feel it's become more welcoming and I, I feel a lot more comfortable here than I did when I first started running for positions and I think just you know, acceptance that I, it is a welcoming place and, and, and raising awareness that you know what women aren't kept to the side or anything, that we are valued members of the magic circle. I, I think. I think I'm becoming more aware of what our magic community does enjoy and, and I, do, I definitely feel supported and, and welcome here now. It did add a certain level of pressure and there's something scary about going on TV as president of the magic circle. You know, things can go wrong. Can you imagine? President of the magic circle gets the trick wrong on TV. It would be mortifying. <laughs> I, and it, it certainly has added an extra pressure. I felt that there were more eyes on me and, and that it has been stressful, but I'm overall, I'm, I'm really proud to be president of the Magic Circle and I'm really pleased with how far we've come and, and where the society is now.